Hello there everybody, this is Krista and welcome back to Crochet Witch Tarot and my kitchen. So today we are doing another, I can't think of what I called this, I did not look beforehand. today. That's basically what we're doing. I know I had a name for this and I cannot think of what it was, but I saw a new to me tag on Emily's channel, which is Emily's Witchcraft and Tarot, and it is the hashtag more than a witch tag put out by Abby the Witch. And I just thought these questions were so much fun and we are cooking today. Today we are making a red meat sauce. So I thought, let's kill two birds with one stone and answer these questions Well, making said sauce. So we're starting out by doing the necessary chopping. I like to do this beforehand because I miscalculate how long it's gonna take them usually, and then that's when things start to burn. So we do it beforehand. So we're chopping garlic and onion simultaneously. We'll see how that goes. But I think we should just get right into it. So, the first question is your name, your name and its meaning, and what are your ages? So we'll start with the first part. My name and meaning, so my name is Krista, <laughs> as mentioned. And the meaning, if you look at the direct translation, it does indeed mean follower of Christ, which is, Kind of fun, I guess, maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, supposedly, my birthday <laughs> is also on the historical date of, or I guess the supposed historical date of the death of Jesus. Do with that what you will. <laughs> I'm kidding. Other than that, I don't really know what the meaning is. My name was actually selected by my parents because of a contestant on Star Search which I think is only a, a show that I only maybe saw one season of. I what I took it to be as was almost like a mix of uh, like American Idol and America's Got Talent almost. But yeah, there was a contestant named Krista spelled the way I spell it and they really liked it. And so that's <laughs> why my name is what it is. Um, age, I am 25, 25 years old. At the quarter, the quarter life, I'm making a mess right now by doing this, but that is, you know, that's okay. Sometimes you just gotta make some messes. Okay, the next question is, astrology, do you follow traditional or, mm, I don't know the other word. I am not someone who does much with astrology. Um, it's just not something I've really gone into as of now. It doesn't interest me that much. I do definitely, you know, I, like, I'm not a, a non-believer in astrology, but in terms of interpreting it myself, knowing it myself, I just don't really have the memory for it. Um, especially since it's something that doesn't interest me tons. But I do like having my chart read or, you know, having certain things interpreted for me. <laughs> when it comes to my chart, I think it's really, really interesting. I just can't seem to remember anything. So, but my big three, that's the next thing, are my sun is in Taurus, my moon is Aquarius, and my rising sign is Virgo. I actually did for my birthday last year, that's a bad piece of garlic, for my birthday last year had a reading from Kyra Getchell, who I am hoping I will remember to link down below, but if not, she is right here on YouTube, but she does astrology readings, um, which are really neat, and so I had that for my birthday last year, and it was really, really cool, and like since then I've really carried over a lot of just things that came up from that reading. Um, so I definitely, like, I would say I really do resonate with my chart. It is very heavily earth sign, specifically Taurus, 
which makes a lot of sense. So that's that on that. Next we have what is your religious upbringing and what path did you take to the craft? I love that term, the craft. <laughs> uh, my religious upbringing was not non-existent, but neither of my parents really were very, like they were not religious or spiritual people at all, but we were kind of brought up in the Catholic church in the sense of like we did all that schooling and stuff. So I am, I am confirmed in the Catholic church actually. My confirmation name I picked <laughs> was Anastasia because of the movie. No, they did not like that reasoning. I really like that movie, so that's the only explanation I have. Um, there is a Saint Anastasia, and I do think her story was pretty interesting. I don't remember it, unfortunately, but I suppose it doesn't really matter since that was not why I picked the name. Side story, anyway. Um, so, anyhow, we were not brought up, I say we, I've got two sisters, we were not brought up in any sort of, like, religious mindset, other than really, um, it was our mom who just wanted us to kind of go through the motions with the Catholic Church in case we ever wanted the option to get married in a Catholic Church or like if someone asked us to be a godparent or something, it would make it easier. I think it was because her experience, she um, is the godmother to one of my cousins. So, but in order to do so, she had to go through all the Catholic and schooling st and stuff. Um, I think either late teens or early 20s, which is not typical. So she was kind of in a classroom with all these like preteens. <laughs> so it was, it was a hassle. So I really think it was just for that reason. I can't imagine it being anything else. And that's what she has said. So yeah, we were not really brought up with any sense of like faith or religion, which has been really interesting kind of going into this more spiritual area of life, I guess you could say. I need a bowl to start putting stuff in because I really felt like I started at base zero, you know, because it, it was sort of like starting out believing in nothing because I really, I did it. Everything that was taught to us in like our Catholic schooling and stuff like that, I wasn't pres like given the message at home that any of that was to be necessarily listened to. So the, I didn't really believe in anything of that sort. So it's been pretty interesting that way. So really the way I found myself here is through tarot. That was my introduction to any sort of like magical realms or anything like that. Um, just through, cause you know, when you're in like the tarot section at Barnes and Noble, there's all sorts of witchcraft books and things like that. So I, I caught on early on that there is like a relation if you want there to be, you don't have to, of course. But yeah, that's sort of how I found my way. I've always kind of had a, a magical world going on in my head. So it was kind of neat as a young adult to find that there is this like movement of people who practice these things that I just found so fascinating um, from a child being a child through now and like, you know, that magic is real. It just, it caught my attention right away. Do you need attention, Stevie? Do you want to come say hi? Say hi. <laughs> she has to make her appearance. I know, you want attention so bad. I promise, I promise in a little bit. Next question. <laughs> Oh, I suppose, like, what, what is my view on what I kind of believe now? I would say I tend to follow more of, like, a animist folk magic path. That's
that's what makes sense to me. I'm really only just starting to get into any sort of deity work. And really the way I view it, and again, my personal viewpoint is um, really focusing on that aspect of deity, especially like pantheism, where it's manifestations of nature and natural forces. I think it's just really interesting. And I love the stories and things of that sort. I think it's, I don't know, just always had an interest in that. So that's where we're at now. The next question is what I'm manifesting for the future. What am I manifesting for the future? Feels like a large question. I'm gonna take that as, and now I'm not remembering, I did, I watched both videos and I'm not remembering how exactly they answered this question. I think I'm gonna take that as, where do I kind of, what do I want to explore next? And I'll tell you what I want to explore next, dragons. Because I've got, a, I've got a solid fairy practice. I really feel connected to the fae and fairies. I feel like the natural next step is dragons, don't you think? So that's where I'm going next. Very exciting. Actually, just today, I don't have the package in here. I haven't even opened it yet. We're doing this first so that the sauce can simmer for a bit. I repurchased because there was a damaged copy sale the smoke ash and embers i can't wait i really did I, i've missed having that deck in my collection so it is back baby um all right i have finished chopping my onion and garlic so we're gonna move to the stove to keep going on this sauce before we answer the next question so i will meet you at the stove Okay, we are back by the stove and now I am heating up my pot and we are going to cook the meat. And I do like a pound, about a pound each of just beef and sausage. The sausage is the key, in my opinion. But we just let this cook with just some salt and pepper. We're gonna go from there. I tried to get an angle where you could see the pot as well, but that just wasn't working out. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, um, oh, you know what I was going to say? I forgot to in the manifesting. I think the other thing I would say is that that I am, I am manifesting is more death creations and also taking what I've already created to sort of new places or like adding on to it. Um, I really would love to do some expansion packs for the Cottage Witch Oracle. But I am also, oh my goodness, this is stuck in there. Yikes. I am also working on a tarot deck that is not um, like a companion to the Cottage Witch Oracle. I would say it lives in the same world. Um, but maybe you'll see soon. I don't know. Who's to say? Um, yeah, that's really all I have to say about it right now. So I thought, I thought that would be a good hmm, manifesting for the future. I never really thought I would make any sort of tarot deck. Um, Oracle decks, like the creation just made more sense to me because you can go anywhere you want with it. But I've been really enjoying working on this, on this tarot. So that's fun. Um, the next we've got my favorite season. Oh, okay. That's an easy one. I am a cold weather gal through and through. I really like some summer activities. I love going swimming. That is definitely a favorite thing of mine. But I do not like being warm. I don't like sweating. I don't like it. Um, but I love, I love this season especially. I think winter is by far my favorite. Hi Stevie. Do you hear that? She wants to go out here. We're not gonna let you out there, it's cold. Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> got distracted. Winter is my favorite season. Favorite holiday, I don't know. I do really like Yule. I like Yule time. But I mean, Samhain is undeniably fun as well. I love Samhain, Halloween, all of the above. I think it's so much fun. Um, 
but winter's by far my favorite. I really love the snow. And I just like the quiet and hermiting that comes with the winter season, I think. That is, that's where I thrive, <laughs> you could say. Aura colors and favorite colors. I don't know my aura color. How do I look into such a thing? Because I would love to know what my aura color is. My favorite colors are pink and yellow. Easy. Easy answer. I like orange as well, but like, overall, pink, yellow. Um, I don't know my aura color. That's something to look into. My jobs and career. Well, um, my job is being a children's librarian, which I love. I really do love my job. I love where I work. I love who I work with. I feel very lucky in that sense. Um, yeah, I really feel like I found the perfect job for myself, which is funny because I really, everything that kind of led up to that was very much unplanned, unexpected. Yeah, I was very surprisingly go with the flow during that period of my life because I really like, from, from graduating high school, I went into college not having declared a major. It took me a while to figure that out. And then I just picked English because I was good at that. And then didn't know what I wanted to do with that. And then I, because I didn't know, they suggested I do this like intern program as a class in my undergrad studies. So they put me into a puppetry museum, which from there I really enjoyed the woman that I worked for and she told me all about the master's degree of library science because she had to get that to do what she was doing in a museum. It really covers a large scope. So then I was like, I'm gonna work in archives. I'm gonna work in a museum. So then I started the masters and started working in libraries, public libraries and realized like, no, I really think this is where I wanna be. Thought I wanted to be an adult librarian, which is very funny looking back on that, because I, that would not have been my thing, <laughs> not even a little. Um, so I thought I wanted to be an adult librarian, but then the library I work now, I originally was working part-time while I was getting my degree, and when I graduated, the children's librarian position very, like, unexpectedly opened up, so I figured, all right, I might as well apply, like, they already know me. They already hired me once, so they must have liked me kind of thing, you know? And so, but it's funny how that can happen. And now I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Um, yeah, I really, I really, I like it. It gives me a lot of freedom to kind of explore different things I want to explore and try out new things. Of course, it's very specific to where I work. It's not the same at working at just any public library. So I feel lucky in that sense where I, I do get a lot of freedom to take things where I want to take them and try out new things I want to try out. Um, but I do love children, so it's funny that I kind of for a bit was like, I don't want to work with children because I've, I've always loved young children. So, guess that on that. That's my job and career. Um, what makes me unique? <gasps> oh! What a question. What makes me unique? Oh. Mm. <laughs> um. As usual, I didn't think about these questions before. What do I think makes me unique? I'm a really good problem solver. I'm very good with, like, sudden hitches in plans coming up with a solution, especially kind of like in a work environment, things like that. Improvising. I'm very good at improvising. Um, so that I think makes me unique. I think also a lot of aspects of just kind of things that come with being a neurodivergent person tend to make me feel like I'm unique in a lot of ways, 
where I feel like I'm very good at being in tune with other people's emotions, noticing things about other people, and kind of easily connecting with others, and not, re not really being afraid to do so, you could say. That maybe makes me unique. Anything else? I can, um, spin plates. You know in the circus how they spin plates on sticks? I can do that. I can pogo stick, and I can walk on stilts. So I should just join a circus one day, because I'm already ready. Plate spinning now? I should get, I should get a set. We're locking that in for later. Anything else? Is there anything else that I'm that I think makes me unique? I don't know. I don't know. That's my answer. My advice for my younger self. Oh, my advice for my younger self would entirely be to not be afraid to just be myself and like what I want to like not feel like I need to fit into any sort of mold for people to like me because the right people will always like you, you know? And if someone doesn't like you, that's not someone you should be worried about anyway. That's my opinion on that. Um, yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of my younger years, and of course that is a consequence of being neurodivergent and not knowing it, not having a reason for like, like, it's just that feeling of knowing I was different, but not having a reason why. So of course, then the natural place to go is like, well, I must need to change. So that would be my biggest advice is to, to just not. Um, also to get a pair of noise canceling headphones. Those are game changing. Who would have thought? Not me. I only just recently got a pair of those and like, wow, incredible, incredible. Um, yeah, I think that's my biggest advice I would say to my younger self. Yeah, that's my answer there. I'm really zooming through these questions. I'm not going to have like, I'm not going to even be done with this sauce before I finish. But that's okay. I suppose this isn't really a cooking video, since you can't even see what I'm cooking. We're body doubling, so you're just joining me while I cook. And we're already started, so I have to finish it, so... That's where we're at. Um, favorite hobbies outside of witchcraft? <gasps> oh, what are my hobbies outside of that? See, here's the thing, is that tarot and magic is, it's obviously my hobby. It's my hyperfixation. So, anything I do outside of it, I want it to... I want it to fit into that world. So I would say crochet, but what do I crochet is tarot bags. You know, like... <sighs> I like playing video games, but one of the video games I pick are, like, the witchy simulator ones. I do really like Pokemon, though. I love Pokemon games. Um, maybe Pokemon would be my answer. That's like the one thing I feel like I engage with in my free time that is not related to like tarot and magic in some way, which is, I mean, that's fine. Again, that's just like a... a um, facet of how my brain works is that that's the thing I love so I'm gonna like everything's gonna fit into that you know yeah I mean I love oh I love graphic novels again I tend to pick like the fun witchy ones I think they're so fun but I've always loved comics and graphic novels those are really a big thing for me. Um, do I have any other hobbies? Ha! Huh. Cooking! Ah, cooking. There you go. Okay. There's my hobby. 
I do love to cook. All right. Oh my gosh, that was the last question. <laughs> we really zoomed through that. Is there anything else that I want to talk about while we are? I gotta turn this light on. Is it gonna make it weird? Uh, maybe. All right, we're gonna let this meat keep cooking, but I think perhaps I did get some tarot mail today. So why don't we open that together? Let's do that. I think that'd be fun. Okay, we're back with the tarot mail while the meat continues to cook. So like I said, what came in today is my new smoke ash and embers. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh, yes. Look at the postcard I got. Oh, it's the Thistledown um, preview, but I, Sandy got this one and she framed it. And oh my gosh, I was like, I want that little poster. Oh, and we got a dragon. How cute. I love the extras they send. Oh, and they sent, they use this like eco packaging, which is really cool. This crinkly paper, Stevie goes crazy for that stuff. So it's like, she gets a present too. All right, so I got the smoke ash and embers. They had a few copies. There might even be some left of dented, like imperfect boxes. So, I mean, let's see what this is looking like. I always go after any sort of imperfect box or anything like that, because it, it just doesn't bother me. I don't even see the dent. So like that corner is a little bit pushed in, otherwise there is like, no dent. Amazing. Oh, this was the one, it's hard to get the cards out though, cause they, they did a good job like packing it so that, oh no, I got them out. I remember the first, the first go around was hard to get them out cause they put some extra cards in to like make sure they don't slide around. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. So we've got smoke, ash, and embers back. I can't wait. I'm really excited to kind of get into some dragon work. And I was looking at the other dragon decks that are out now, but none of them really, I don't know. They're just not the same to me. I don't really like feel called to any of them like I do that deck. So I'm happy to have that back. Let's see what else. Oh, I've got a package me and Allie from Totero did a little trade I'm excited. this is a cool one I forgot uh, I for not that I didn't I forgot I didn't think it was coming this soon so it is it's a Doreen virtue deck yeah which is what it is but it's the healing with fairies Oracle that's gonna be a cool one to look into Interesting. I've never really tried out a Doreen Virtue deck, obviously, because, you know, she, she went a little cuckoo bananas. <laughs> That's all I have to say on that, but fairies, come on. Okay, now this, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's not even tarot mail. Uh... What is this? What the heck is this? <laughs> oh, that's an eBay absolute fail. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. Okay, so I thought, I saw on eBay, it was a Barbara Walker copy. I assumed it was the full size the way they photographed it, but this is definitely just the, <laughs> the tin version without the tin. <laughs> I did not like pay much for it. So I thought I like really lucked out and I was kind of wanting this deck or I, I not kind of, I was wanting this deck. So I thought I found like the full size though, which is like completely out of print. That's hilarious. So now I've got a Barbara Walker without the tin. <laughs> All right, we're gonna. Have... 
That's okay. Obviously, we'll just make a bag for it. No worries. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> okay. Um, there's one other package, but this might not be mine. I think this was a book Sandy ordered. So if it is, obviously, I'm not going to show it. I'll let her show it in her video, you know? I think that's what this is, though. So. Well, we got to open to find out. Oh yeah, okay, this is this is Sandy's book. All right, so that's the end of my mail today. I hope you all enjoyed, and enjoyed this video and this impromptu uh, mail time, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I will see you all again very soon. I don't know with what. I don't know what videos I want to film soon. We'll figure that out, we'll figure that out, you'll see. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all having a great beginning to your week, and I'll see you again soon.